So in the midst of offseason meetings, the NFL has decided to expand the Rooney rule. And it is they're doing it in an interesting way. So from now on, all 32 NFL teams will have to hire a minority offensive assistant coach starting in the 2022 NFL season as part of a policy meant to enhance diversity efforts in the league. Um, the coach can be a female or a member of an ethnic or racial minority, according to the adopted policy by the NFL owners during their annual owners meeting. Uh, so this, again, is an expansion of the Rooney rule. It has been in the conversation at large from the International Football League because of, we all know, the Brian Flores lawsuit is floating out there still. We all know that there have been criticisms of the Rooney rule, criticisms of the way it's been implemented, criticism, uh, criticisms of the way it's been used by some teams and circumvented. And, th and these two rules are, or these two additions to the rule are interesting. Now, there's now there's a conversation to be had about the Rooney rule in general because I kind of fall on the I fall on the line of where I think that the Rooney rule for a very long time the ori the original Rooney rule was a a means to an end to an extent and it had kind of played its course and it needed to either be adjusted enhanced or honestly NFL teams could get, just get their shiznit together and, you know, hire the right candidates for coaches, which, you know, there's a lot of minority candidates for coaches that get overlooked. You know, you have you have jabronis like Josh McDaniels getting hired as NFL head coaches after they've, you know, mo been unprofessional, like, been unprofessional by, you know, just sub circumventing, not circumventing, but just leaving teams at the altar or just not doing their job correctly, like in Denver, you know, again... I'm not going to get into that. I have a whole rant about that that's kind of separate from this. But the addition of minority uh, of a mandatory minority offensive assistant coach is interesting to me. And I understand why it is an offensive assistant coach rather than potentially a defensive assistant coach or a special teams assistant coach. The reason they pick offense is because most of the time, that's where your head coaching pool comes from. It comes from the offensive side of the ball. It's probably not uh, exclusively how you should be doing it if you're an NFL team is probably not how uh what what's best for business but that's the way it's done you know a, a quality offensive assistant turns into a quality offensive coordinator turns into a quality head coach that at least that's the way most NFL teams do it most NFL teams see it and that's the perception of the league and look it's an offensive league it is what it is so i understand that uh Pittsburgh Steelers owner Art Rooney said it's in about this, it's a recognition that at this moment, when you look at the stepping stones for a head coach, they are the coordinator positions, and that is true. Whether it's offensive, defensive, most of the time it's offensive, like I said, but, you know, it's those big coordinator positions. Those are the ones that really groom you and prepare you to be a head coach, and this is a way that the NFL is trying to groom better, or, or better groom, I should say, brighter prepare, I should say, you know, the minority candidates for these higher up positions so that they are part of that that talent pool of potential head coaches. And that's what the, we want in the NFL. We want a, a league that is more representative of the players, more representative of the fans. Uh, and that's what we should all aspire for, especially in a league that is vast majority African-American. That's just the truth, people. You don't want to hear it. That's not my problem. Um, now, I, I also want to talk about the inclusion of women, which, yeah, probably should have been done a long time ago. Uh, but there are, believe it or not, people, women know a thing or two about football. <gasps> I know, right? I know, right? Like, there's a bunch of people out there who are shocked, but if you're telling me, like, because there are some coaches out there who have not played in the NFL before, who've not even really played football, and they've been assistant coaches, they've been all, in all these positions. And you're telling me that some of those people are more qualified than a woman just because she's a woman? Nah, not buying it. Not buying that snowflake crap. Uh, it's about damn time. I'm telling you, there are go this is going to open the door for, I think, better league, a, a better, smarter talent pool. 
and just a broader talent pool. It's going to broaden the horizons of a lot of teams in the NFL. I think it's great. Um, now the now one thing that I do kind of take umbrage with, and I do think that this, I I, I want to be clear. I don't think that this is a permanent fix. It's not at all a permanent fix. At the end of the day, nothing's going to change unless ownership changes, unless ownership decides to change. And that is why there have been calls from fans. There have been calls from advocacy groups. There have been calls from multiple people that maybe there should be a provision that says, you know, in addition or instead of having the mandatory minority offensive coordinator or, or what have you, maybe they should apply that same rule to ownership. Maybe you need to have a certain percentage of your team owned by a minority, which makes sense. But the owners will never do it because that's against their best interest. It's against what it's against their bottom line because it's something that directly impacts them. And see, and that's the thing: never get it twisted, people. NFL owners, these billionaires, do not care about you. They don't care about your community. They don't care what doesn't matter where where you are, what background you come from. They don't care about you. One thing they do care about is money. And the, the thing they care about most is their money and all the revenue streams that it comes from. So if you're ever going to be out there defending these owners, saying that, oh, well, well, Jerry Jones is doing what's best for the, the communities. Jerry Jones is doing what's best for for the NFL teams. Jerry Jones is the reason multiple NFL teams have, or multiple NFL cities have lost their teams. So I don't want to hear it from him. I don't want to hear it from any of these things. I don't think there should be owners of, of these big sports teams. I genuinely think they should be community run, kind of like an organization, kind of like the Green Bay Packers are. But that's just me. But overall, I think expanding the Rooney rule is going in the right direction. But at the end of the day, nothing changes until ownership changes. And at some point, NFL, NBA, all these major sports leagues need to address that.